Time for an oil change. It's a 2023 Subaru WRX premium model. Did get the STI exhaust mufflers. Um, the only other thing, well, the mirrors. This is the auto dimming mirrors and it has a little light that shines when you open the door. Also, the floor mats, the all weather floor mats. But otherwise it's, uh, oh, and it has the CVT with the eyesight system. It's your standard 2.4 liter turbo. The intercooler on top here. I've got a nice Wix brand filter I'm going to replace the Subaru filter with because the blue filters I've heard, I'm not sure if that's for the WRX also, but the blue filters were just like a rebranded Fram filter. So this is the model number, Wix WL10078, so that will be my replacement. Same physical size, you know, it's not taller or short or anything like that. So it has 500 miles on it. I'm going to do the initial. I know some people say you don't need to do a break in oil change on a modern engine, but uh, I'm doing it anyway. 500 miles and ending it at 3,500 and then uh, 4,000 every 4,000 miles after that. Also installing the Fumoto engine oil drain valve. This is model number F108SX. The torque on that is 18 foot-pounds. That's my writing. Uh, but this has a bolt with holes in it. Uh, you can see one in there way down in the bottom. There's two large holes. So the oil comes into the bolt here and it does have its own gasket so you don't need a gasket. Made in Japan. Um, so it comes through the bolt hole and then through either of those two holes into the housing, you know, this just the general housing here, and then uh, we'll take this safety clip off, and then flip the the drain, you know, the lever here over to this side, and then it'll drain out this hole. So it's a metal bow valve in there, bow valve, valve, <laughs> metal bow valve, uh, ball valve. What am I saying? Metal bow ball valve, metal ball valve. So it's a really heavy duty construction, should last a lifetime for the car. Um, again, 18 foot pounds. Looks like it's made out of brass. So I'll show you that when I get that installed. The only spot I could find that was logical to jack it up. This open area here, there's some plastic pieces here. Ends here and there. And then this is open metal, so I believe that's where the factory jack would go. And then put a uh, jack stand with it. Just barely resting on it right there. Again, that's the only good spot I could find to fit the jack stand in there. Don't trust your life or limb on just a jack. Be sure you use a jack stand. It's not worth getting trapped out there and killed or injured and that would not be fun especially for you or anybody that cares about you when you jack this up in the front it does come off in the back also so just be aware of that and be careful so the oil pan is right here for the engine oil there's the drain plug here so we're going to remove that and replace that with the fumoto drain valve so it looks like we've got plenty of space here should still be up in there we'll check that out make sure if it's questionable at all I won't use it all right so as you can see the um, 
original plug does not, well, the Fumoto does not protrude any further, actually less than the original factory drain plug. So that's good. Appears to have basically the same amount of threads also. It just has the factory plug has this little extra piece here. Sorry for the video. I don't know if that's magnetic. Let's see. I was trying to tap it on a steel tool and it doesn't doesn't grab on. So this is brass, but this is steel right here. So anyway, make sure you get that crush washer. Take that off with it. Don't leave the crush washer on and put the Fumoto valve on there with the crush washer because you have a washer uh, or uh, rubber O-ring already on there. So go ahead and put this under here. It's still draining. Warm the engine up for a few minutes first. Yeah, I believe this is going to go. And with this, you can position it kind of any way you want to. There's this bolt that goes through there, so you can swing this around anywhere you want in the final position and torque it down to 18 foot pounds. So it's going to go right up in here. This is a little bit of an angle, the hole is. So, sorry about the video there. Uh, so it's going to be installed sort of like this. It's well up under. We'll check it again. We'll hand tighten it. But that should be definitely clearing the bottom of the car so nothing will snag onto it. Letting the oil drain out of the oil pan. So I'll use my oil filtered pliers here to remove the old filter. And um, I have one of these. Saw these being talked about on YouTube. So that's nice. It's got this uh, clear part here. You can see, watch the oil going down, make sure it's not getting too full where it's gonna bubble over, which it definitely shouldn't. But anyway, that screws right into your oil fill cap. Let's make sure it clears in there. It's the first time I've actually used it. But yeah, it fits, looks like it clears really well. Make sure that's a screw right in there and just you have a really easy spot to dump your oil without getting it all over the place. Comes with a seal on the bottom. So that's nice. So we'll go ahead and take that oil filter off. All right, so this is the original filter. This is the one made in Japan, the Tokyo Roki. There's a drain back valve there. You see it there, rubber valve there. So we'll get this all cleaned up and uh, put that new Wix filter on there. All right, well, there she is. I don't know if I should turn that, uh, here, let's do that. I'm trying to get the exposure down a little bit. But I checked, uh, you know, it fits tight and snug. There's no, no leaks at all. And it's up out of the way. You see, here's the bottom. It's nowhere near, you know, going to fit anything. So... Just take that blue, this blue uh, safety pin out of there and then just push up. And actually, hold on a second. It grabs it. Oh, it's got a few drips left in there, let's see. And I use my Tecton torque wrench to get 18 pounds. I have a few drips left in there. Let's take that out. Get that clip out of there without Dropping it into the oil pan. So you just push up and then swing it over. There's a little bit left in there. Let me turn this, see if I can turn this light off. I guess I can't turn the light off when the when it's already recording. But that's how it'll be. So it looks good. All right, so we're ready for the oil now. It's a good quality Mobile One synthetic. We got the filler really tight in there. Let's go ahead and fill that up, and uh, I'll probably take it back over into my driveway, straighten, you know, get it on flat land, and recheck the oil.
Um, but I believe it takes 4.8 quarts. 4.8 quarts with a uh, oil and filter change. And there's something about that that's just a satisfying scene there, isn't it? <laughs> I love the easy maintenance on this Subaru. I mean, everything is right on top. The oil filter, um, air filter, you just pop it open, no screwdriver needed. Super easy. Love it. Probably going to stop with that and check it. Need to get on flat ground and flat ground and check it over in the other driveway because it's a little bit on a slope here. All right, well, I've confirmed. I've got oil on the stick no drips new oil filter installed um, no drips from the uh, Fumoto and uh, probably about four and a half quarts or a little more installed right now and I'm gonna go put it on the flat driveway after I warm it up and check it again but one trick if you haven't heard my Crocs um, press the, the gas pedal all the way down to the floor as far as it'll go and then try to start it. It'll cycle through uh, 10 seconds or so, try to start and it won't start. Uh, but that'll pump the oil through the engine, get it back up into the filter and everything. Um, and then hit the start button again and get it started. And then we'll get into the menu here and also just double check the, the uh, reminder for the oil change, which I've already set. So let me just press the pedal all the way to the floor. Oh, we gotta hit the brake too before we start. So you can see it's not starting. Okay, now it's done. Let off the gas. No more foot on the pedal. Let's go listen to it. That's it. Again, this is a 2023 premium WRX. Those are the aftermarket floor floor liners, front and back. This just has the cloth seats. Um, it's a little overexposed because of all the dark interiors trying to brighten the exposure, but uh, there's a couple power outlets here in the back. I like that. Two USB C's, or I mean two USB A's. 2.1 amps per. And there's a couple up here. Two more USB A there. Oh, let's go to the menu. Hold on a second. I think it's scattered brain and forget stuff. <laughs> So the maintenance menu here, car info, so let me go back, car info, maintenance, engine oil, so I set a reminder for 3,500 miles, 
we'll never reach that date probably. Well, we might. It's, the car doesn't get driven a lot. Technically, this is for my son. I'll have a Subaru Outback Wilderness someday. Same engine, um, 2.4 liter turbo, but that'll be probably six years or more from now. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So once I got the oil reminder set there, we're all good. Thanks for watching.